Oh, it's a happy new year to all of the League of Ireland folk out there and particularly to the loyal Between the Stripes followers. I'm delighted to say uh, we're relaunching the League of Ireland Life Series um, over the next while. And uh, obviously the first man we had on that series, I think it was back in 2019 we started this out, was A. Durvin. And uh, things have come a long way since then, A. So we're going to catch up with him right now and uh, see how he's getting on. A, happy new year to yourself. Same to you, Karen. Yeah, as I said, you were the first player we sat down with for that new series. Uh, it was actually the Champions League final of 2019. Spurs were playing uh, Liverpool in the final. We sat down that day out in flank here and had a bit of a, a long range and chat about, I suppose, your your early years with um, Melview and Longford and and coming up through the ranks at the town. So obviously we don't need to go back over that today. But as I said, things have come a long way since then. Um, you're the local boy in that team. And we spoke last year. We spoke about how you came through the team and your ambitions and, and hopes for the future. I'm sitting here chatting to you now. You're a Premier Division player at Longford Town. Dream come true? Yeah, of course. I think I said it to you that day too, how uh, that was one of my goals. And for it to come true, it's a, it's a very proud moment for me. Yeah, and uh, look, it was a crazy, crazy year. Um, I know you've only had a very short career in terms of senior football in the League of Ireland, but I don't think you'll ever have a, a season like that again in terms of everything that, everything that went on off the pitch and then having to come through the playoffs. It's the first time the town ever successfully came through the playoffs to reach the Premier. Yeah, it was a crazy year. We started off very well in the league, as you know, and then everything came to a halt. Uh, we came back and we just we couldn't really get a run of it. I don't know what it was. It was just the fact that the break or the COVID, I don't know what it was. And we came through the playoffs, we had hard work for Paul. We kept biting back yeah. every time someone a team bet us, we were bouncing back and we we had a lot of fight in our in our change room and that's something that was underestimated, I think. When we spoke last, it was the good old days before COVID was a thing. Um obviously we've had a number of lockdowns. We're in another lo- lockdown now. Uh, as we said last season was very testing for everyone involved. Pre-season's about to start up again for most clubs and we've got a bit of doubt now over when the league's going to start, what the format will be. Does that come into your mind at all as a player or do you just have to get your fitness work done, get your conditioning done and just be ready for whenever the league does start? Um, not really. Look, you obviously, you see you see these things. You're not like living under a rock or anything. Um, but not really. I'm still training the way I'm sure everybody else is still trying to get the ball working, uh, the gym working, I've weights out. Out in the kitchen there and getting my runs and stuff like that. So I just have to keep knuckle down and just be ready for the new season. Yeah, and uh, since we spoke last as well, you, you've also got a career for yourself off the pitch now. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that and how it fits in with your football and life? Uh, just working in the post now. So it's actually very handy with football. It's early mornings, but it doesn't clash with training and stuff like that. And then you're coming home from the post about half one. You're just getting a bit to eat and stuff like that, and you're going off training for the day. So it's, it's a busy lifestyle, but I wouldn't want that any other way. Brilliant stuff. And uh, as I said, with Longford came through the playoffs uh, last season. And when we spoke last, you were that young player that was just coming into the team at the time. And, and some people might have said he's, he's a little bit hot headed at times, this young Durvin. He's a very good player. But in the playoffs, you picked up a couple of very early yellows in the games and, and you just carried on and showed a real maturity. Do you think that's something you've developed on over the last year and a half? Um, yeah, I think that just comes with games, you know, and the people around me have been very good with me, like Dara and John and Marzi and stuff like that. Um, I think I'm a lot better of a player now than I was when the last time we talked because I was taking on my comfort zone in a way, which which helped me a lot. So I think I am a better player now and I think it's stood to me that experience of games that I've had um, to get the, through the whole Shells game, which I think helped a lot in the UCD game as well. And I think when we spoke as well, uh, we mentioned that something you would like to do is add more goals to your games. Well, you timed it perfectly towards the end of last season, didn't you? You got that goal against Galway. Um, is that something you still need to work on a little bit more or were we starting to see the signs of it towards the end of the season? Um, no, I still need to work on it. I only scored two goals last year, you know. Um, I scored more the year before. Um, I got I scored at a good time last year. I think it sort of helped us in that Galway game as well. But I still need to to add more goals to my game and start shooting more. That Galway game, would you say that was your best performance in the town shirt? Yeah, definitely. I think they, I think I had an awful lot of space, and yeah. I think it was just one of those days where everything was everything was coming off me. Mm. And look, um, we're we're looking into a to a Premier Division season now for Longford Town. It's it's a big change from from what fans have been used to over the last three or four years. It'll be your first experience of 
of top flight football, but you've had some success in cup competitions uh, as a town player. Obviously, Longford knocked out Sligo two years in a row. They knocked Shamrock Rovers out of the League Cup as well. So is that a sign this town team can go up and can compete against the big dogs? Yeah, I think I think we all said last year that it probably would suit us more playing than the Premier because the first division is such a such a battle and it's so hard to play and where lads are kicking you and they don't care and they're actually leaving Mark and you where the Premier is a bit more football based and I don't think there's many teams that could play football the way we could the last two seasons, but we didn't have the fire or the bite that it took to win the first division or to crawl through games in the first division, but I don't think that would be a factor as much this year. So I think it'll probably suit us more as a, as a team. Mm. And obviously your performances, they certainly caught the eye of other managers out there. There was a lot of speculation linking you with a move away, but you eventually put pen to paper. I think you, you gave lots of hands a bit of a scare leading up to Christmas, but they were able to celebrate Christmas in, in a good humour because uh, you put pen to paper on the deal and there was the big announcement video and everything that went with it. What was that couple of weeks like for you? Because I'm sure people were constantly on to you. Um... It was actually done earlier than people thought. Me and James just thought we'd play about for a bit. Um but it was it was done. It was done early enough. Um it was just it was frustra it was not frustrating, but it was just it was getting to me a bit where you're you're so busy at work and you're just trying to do your own bits and you're you're walking or you're jogging and people are stopping you and asking, Oh, have you decided, have you decided when you sort of want that downtime and want that time away from football? But uh, I talked to John and I talked to Dara and it sort of it helped me a lot, the decision. Mm. And everyone remembers that iconic photo after the UCD game, that amazing game in the playoffs, you and Dara uh, arm around each other and brilliant photo. And there seems to be a really good relationship there. And I know when you've spoken to me before on the podcast as well, you've mentioned John Martin and, and kind of what he's done for your game as well. Was the two lads a big factor in, in your re-signing for the football club? Um, yeah, of course. Look, in, and in fairness to them, as I was saying, the people were at me a lot. They actually gave me a lot of space and... Mm. and they gave me the time to think where other people weren't but they were they were great to me and one thing about them is that I could I could come to them with my point of view and not just because they they represent Lampard Town they were talking to me as an individual and what they think was best for me which helped me a lot and it made me feel very secure so it's it's great to have a relationship like that with your management team as well at the same time Obviously, you're a lifelong Longford Town fan. I remember you standing in Section O with the lads back in the day and you've come through the, the underage ranks and now you're, you're playing for the for the senior side. And Dara, obviously, and Johnny have both played for the club as well. Is that an added bonus that there's that little bit of, of history within the dressing room? Because I know Johnny mentioned um, before, af after, the, after Rob Manley missed that penalty in the playoff final, he told him the story about the town missing a penalty in a cup final and still going on to win the game. And they kind of drew confidence from that in the second half against Shells. Is it important to have that kind of connection to the club within the dressing room? Yeah, I think they know what it means to the club to be back up in the Premier League. They've been here through the best times. and I think that was there when they got relegated. So they sort yeah. of know what it means to the club to be, in the, to be in the Premier and how you'll get the whole town behind you and stuff like that. And As well as that, the passion that they both have. Like, I, I don't think there's another assistant coach that does the work that John does or a manager that does the work that Dyer does they give us stats for every single game they study teams so in detail like it and it, it does help and people might think it doesn't help but it does help a lot where you're going in and you're knowing what your opponent is like the fella you're marking or the whole team as a unit what they'll do if they're under pressure and stuff like that so uh, the passion and the fact that they know what the club is about helps a lot yeah and obviously, while you were trying to get your downtime in the off-season, the two lads, I'm sure they've been flat out looking for players and, and doing bits and pieces. Obviously, Longford have made a few signings. Callum Thompson's come in. He was very impressive in the two games against the town last season. Uh, Aaron Dobbs is back at the club, a player obviously you'll all know very well within the camp there. Um, and and uh, Kirk has come in from Bose as well with rave reviews from Bose fans. So do you think the business they've done is going to be enough to keep the town in the Premier next season? Or give them, oh, a, give them a shout anyway, staying in the Prem. Put it yeah, way. of course. Look, we know what, we know what Callum's about. He he, he he was very good against us. The two games, not just one game, the yeah. two games. We, we know what Dobbsy's about. Dob, I think Dobbsy will be a great addition. Him and Rob, I think they'll link very well because they're both workhorses and they're both strong lads. So I think that'll help a lot. And as you said, the uh, reviews about uh, Paddy Kirk from Bulls fans seem to be great. So... He's a he's a Premier Division experience too, so I think we have a nice little balance there. Um, I think people might might write us off, but I think I think we're all fairly confident that we'll we'll not just stay up, but we'll challenge. 
And uh, I know when you spoke to us on the, the promotion special on the podcast, you said the one game you were looking forward to and the one player you were looking forward to meeting was Jack Byrne. Obviously, he's gone out of the league now. So who was next on your list after that? We'll see if we can ship him off as well and make things easier for next year. Yeah. Um, oh, and really, I don't, I don't really mind who we face against. It was just the fact that it would have been nice to say, oh, you're playing against an Irish international, you know, that sort of way. Uh, mm. Test yourself against the best. But yeah, I was a bit disappointed when I heard he left, but I'm sure for good reasons yeah and I'm sure there'll be plenty of other big names you'll be looking forward to, to squaring up against next season uh, look unfortunately at the moment we don't know whether fans are going to be back in for the start of the season wherever that may be um, but I think we've seen towards the end of last year the Longford Town fans online they really got behind the team um, and supported them the whole way through the playoffs with sending in video messages and whatnot. Uh, from your point of view I'm sure you'd like to see that continue now at the start of next season even if, if, if it's a few months before the fans can get back in the ground it's important that everyone gets behind the town early on of course yeah it's it's mad like the way a few videos can really get you so motivated for a game and the stuff that James is doing on social media putting all these things together and people taking times out of their days to send stuff like that in it really got us motivated for the playoffs and I think that's what stood to us the fact mm. that we knew we actually knew how much it meant to the town as a, as a whole and how much it meant to every fan that was, even when there was limited numbers that had season tickets and stuff like that. And that played a lot in our minds where we'd do that extra run or we'd get that extra block in and stuff like that. So I don't think people realise how, um, how effective it actually is, those videos and getting behind us and stuff like that. <laughs> That's uh, something you've certainly become more polished at, isn't it? The media side of things, because I remember with James giving you your first interview after a game uh, in the first division a couple of seasons ago. You were very, very nervous on camera, but you're a pro at it. You're a pro at it now. Yeah, it's it's uh, very daunting the first the first time you're stuttering a lot and stuff like that. I think I was only what it was just like seventeen at the time. Yeah. So it was very uh, daunting. I wasn't used to it, but you get used to it. You get used to it fairly quickly as well. And the fact that I know you and James as well helps a lot because it's just like talking normally you know it's something that's come on a lot of the club though isn't it obviously I'm involved with the media team so I'm going no, to say that but um, the club no, as a whole is. has like, really come forward even the deal with Elvries it's it's brilliant for the club and brilliant for the yes, fans exactly and even when I'm searching through Instagram now or Twitter or something like that it comes up out of nowhere you know what I mean which is great like if it's coming up on my newsfeed it's coming up on everyone's newsfeed but the media side of it has come on a lot I remember I was just training but you could see people you didn't see stuff on Love Town and social media and stuff like that but now it's most days you're seeing stuff in Love Town it's great to see um, that there's that actual professionalism in the club and people are taking it serious mm. um, Look hopefully there's going to be lots of big stories to talk about throughout next year but uh, hey, thanks for joining us today and uh, very best wishes for next season it's going to be a good no one Good man Karen. thank you